Hello everybody and welcome back to another YouTube tutorial video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to use the auto key, the set key, and what these different tangents are, the curve editor. So you'll be able to learn how to understand all of those. Sorry it's been long, it's been so long since I've made a video, but you know, things have been going on. I already made a video about that, so let's just jump straight into this. So I'm going to go ahead and fly uh a couple things of these so i have a certain amount of these because if you go over here you'll see that there's that many as there are boxes and we're gonna start off with the auto key so with auto key let's say you take this box here and let's say 60 frames from now so if you have a 30 frames per second it would be two seconds so over the course of two seconds you want to move there since it's on auto <clears throat> it's going to automatically move that over now we have this on just the default in and out this will automatically uh adjust the curve in and curve out of your animation so that's kind of like the default um also uh really important let's say you did that and your uh, object did not move if you go over to your key filters let's open these up you can see i have position rotation scale and ik parameters on so if you want to adjust materials, modifiers, or you know you want to adjust um, the vertices of certain things, go ahead and turn all these on and you can adjust those. But I will go over those in another video, so let's not focus about that. But if your object did not move, that's how you would fix it by going to key filters and turning your position on. So that was our first one. So we go to our second one, we have straight line. So this is gonna do, this is a straight line, it's consistent. It does not speed up it does not slow down let's move that over there now these are moving at the exact same speed because that's just what max thinks correct speed is but we can always adjust that let's go on to our third box our third box we have this one it looks like a jagged line um this one is not one you'll probably use very often but if you move it there you can see it just jolts when you hit 60 fps or 60 not fps 60 frames it will just jump that's how that one works. Moving on to the fourth one. This one here, if I move it. I'm actually not going to show you that one yet. I'm going to do the next one and do this, that one. So watch this box and this box here, uh, the way these work. So you see one starts slow and gets really fast towards the end, where the other one starts off fast and then slows down. Now. This one right here, that is the, the one that has like the over curve. So it looks like a bubble versus like a ramp almost. This one is going to start off very slow and then speed up towards the end. Whereas the second one, this one is going to start off very fast and then slow down. Uh, let's move on. So these here are going to, um, let's go ahead and move over to six. You're not going to notice any difference in these. And the reason for that is let's go to our graph editor here and go to curve editor. This is going to allow you to adjust your curve. So you can see here, this can look a little bit intimidating at first, but it's really not that bad, I promise you. Now we only edit it along the x axis here. So we can actually only select just the x. Because if you have y and z flat line, you can see they don't move. So with this last one here on, we have this bezier. So you can actually take this and you can adjust how much things move in and out. So if you click on these, you can see this is zero frames. This is 60. You can adjust the speed in and speed out of these. which is really, really great. Now, if we move this up, you can see it shoots up really fast, slows down because of the way we have this. So if I take this, let's say I move this up. I want the super fast and then it slows down at the very last second. Why would you want something like this? So let's say you have a car and it's speeding up really fast and at the last second it has to slam on its brakes. That's what this curve editor would be great for. So you can do something like that. Or you can do vice versa. Move this one downward. This one this way and it's going to start off 
very slow and then speed up super fast so that's that's how you do that and that is the curve editor now if we were to let's say go over to 60 here and we moved it into z-axis once again we have an auto key so it's going to automatically learn that see our curves come back over here we can now adjust the axis and the x so we can adjust you know curve of the z and how fast that moves at the beginning and end so on and you can do the same thing for y and the same thing works for your rotation and scale scale has its own thing it's very single it's just scale up and down let's go ahead and close this um i saved this last box for set key um just so you know set key is very finicky like let's say i move this and i don't set a key and then i move it back it's going to pop back to that position now this can cause a lot of issues um i've had times where i've been working on things to say i make you know another box i make another box i come over here i edit this box from to edible poly this is just an example like i edit all this stuff so like i did all these edits and then i move my time frame things just disappear so you got to keep that in mind if you're working with set key to always make sure you set your key so we're at zero here and we move to 60. we move it over here we don't save it it's just going to disappear let's move it to 60. then you do set key now set key but here's the issue since we didn't set a key at the beginning it doesn't know what it's doing so we have to go back set one at the beginning and then also set one at oops my bad also set one at so now it knows at the beginning we set a key for it to be right here at the end we set a key for it to be right there now if you look down here these little colors it has blue green and red and what that's indicating is your key filter that's indicating your position your rotation and your scale so if we wanted to do just position which is what we're working with Go ahead and delete these. You can just select them and hit delete. Go back to the beginning. Hit our keyframe. See just a red one now. Go over here. Move it to the end. Add it. Just a red one. So now the red means just your position. You don't have all those other colors because they're not keyframed out. So I hope uh, this was kind of helpful for you. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on animation and showing you how to use all this. So if you didn't learn something in this, please go ahead and drop a comment and be like, hey, uh, could you explain this better or vice versa, you know, like, hey, could you go over this? But I want to go over some different uh, animation techniques and how to uh, use all this stuff to create some cool animations. In the next video, I'll show you some cool animations I've been working on and there. So this will be part one of a series that we will be working on. Anyways, it's great, great to be back, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. I love all you guys. You are awesome. If you like the video, like it. If you like the channel, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy spring break and enjoy spring if you are in a nice area like I am in Texas. Peace out.